Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And as promised in our last episode, we are going to talk about Extreme Carnage Scream. Uh, number one, which just came out, this ties into the Extreme Carnage event. This is, the, I guess, essentially the second chapter of it. Although I don't feel like it really continues anything that was set up in the first issue, but it does kind of touch on the world that the first issue is inhabiting, you know, like the kind of the changes in the world. And one of them being uh, obviously Alchemex and the Guardsmen and all that stuff and kind of their in potential involvement with the hunting of the symbiotes. So that's kind of what's happening here. We start off the book, uh, which is written by Clay McLeod Chaplin, who is the guy who wrote um, the Scream series, which we were all a big fan of. Uh, and then we have also have Chris Mooneyham, who's one of the artists on that series, coming back to be the artist on this. So uh, it was cool to see that reunion and to kind of get the Scream team back together again to do another book about Andy. And I know a lot of people out there are big fans of this character. I am myself a fan of Andy. And I also liked um, some of the other versions of character of Scream, like Patricia and Donna. And so, Still, there's that uh, voices inside Scream's head where she's like, sometimes here's Andy's voice, sometimes here's Donna's and that kind of thing. Um, sometimes here's a Scream symbiote. So there's still that going on. Not as much. And I don't think there's a lot of Patricia in here, which uh, I, I, at least I think uh, there wasn't a lot of Patricia in here because the, the colors are different for each like internal caption dialogue. They do different colors, but I, I think I only counted like two or three colors. So I, I'm assuming one of them is not Patricia, which is a bummer because I, I don't want that character to be forgotten either. And I think she's still in there somewhere. So I would I would like that to be used a little bit more. But that's a nitpick that doesn't ultimately take away from the story. Uh, the main thing is here is that we are, we are getting Alchemex stuff. So I'll show off some of the pages of the comic. But we have our friend here in the wheelchair. Was it Dr. Dan or something like that? I can't remember his name. I always forget. I, I, you know, We'll get there when we get to the Mike Costa run again. But seeing that character again and being part of this Alchemex thing where they have been capturing a bunch of monsters and stuff um, is neat. But they're really painting Alchemex up to already be the bad guys, which I know they are in the Spider-Man 2099 universe. But I felt like Liz Allen running it, like they were actually trying to help Eddie in the Mike Costa run. So I did feel like this was a little bit of a departure from there. But then again, symbiotes did just attack the planet. So maybe that's their rationale is that Alchemex seems evil now, but now they're just basically like, we gotta, we're gonna do what we can to help mankind against symbiotes since we have some, uh, you know, a background in helping Eddie and stuff. We know a little bit about symbiotes. So maybe this is our way of like, you know, helping humanity. So maybe it's just that, maybe just the like scream and these characters perceive them as villains, but they're not fully there yet. Cause I remember Dr. Dan being like a decent dude. So I'm, I just felt that jarred me a little bit. Uh, so I'm curious to see where they go with that. Hopefully they go in that kind of direction that I just explained where they're not really bad. They're just like, they're just trying to take a piece of the anti-symbiote pie, which is, you know, that, that phobia is going across the world now where everyone is, you know, you know, hesitant or, or, you know, hates symbiotes, I guess. And there's that Senator uh, Crane who is now, you know, leading the Friends of Humanity again to, you know, speak up against symbiotes and symbiote activity and stuff. So now we have the Guardsmen out there. And what we have at Alchemex, like I said, they, they have a bunch of monsters like locked up. And one of them is Doppelganger. So I kind of like that we see Doppelganger again, although I thought he lost his legs at one point. Um, but then maybe in Absolute Carnage, he got him back or something. Maybe that's why I'm confused. Because Absolute Carnage, there was stuff that, that's in there that I just don't remember because I, that book I didn't like that much um, or a lot of the tie-ins. Um, but it, either way, we got Doppelganger back and he broke out. And I think some scientist makes some dumb comment where he's like, oh man, that's the third you know breakout this month or something like that. And it's like, what? <laughs> like okay, whatever. So, so you guys need to up your security. But maybe that's why they have the guardsmen here. So the guardsmen come down to take down, uh, you know, Doppelganger, but that's when Scream shows up because she wants to take down Doppelganger because Doppelganger, last time Scream saw Doppelganger was with Carnage and Demogoblin stuff. So I kind of like that logic. Like, okay, well, I need Doppelganger alive to lead me to Demogoblin, who obviously is still out there and Scream wants to take down. So that's still a plot thread we haven't got the wrap up for yet because the Scream series unfortunately got canceled. So I like that you know, they're still working on that. They're like, hey, we haven't forgot about our overall story from the screen book. So they mentioned that a little bit here. But obviously, as she fights Doppelganger, she gets into a battle with the guardsmen. And at first, I think it looks like she kills this guardsman. Like she, it, you know, she it says crack. So I'm guessing she cracked his neck. Maybe she just cracked the helmet around him. But they don't show that guard getting back up and wounded. So I assume she killed him. And the only reason I bring that up is because afterwards she gets um, hit by some of their, you know, weapons and stuff by, you know, a different member, a different guardsman group, uh, you know, come in for backup and they hit her 
and she decides, okay, I'm going to go into the sewers to hide from them because they're shooting Sonics and it's, it's messing with my head. She gets into the sewer and it turns out she's in a nightmare, L much like Freddy Krueger. Carnage can like enter her mind through the symbiote and that's what he does and he takes over control of the symbiote, the scream symbiote. So Andy is now caged up, you know, that theme of cages that Donnie was doing in his story. You have Carnage here that, you know, kind of caged up Andy and has taken control of the Scream symbiote. So apparently that's what Carnage can do now. After he had the link to the hive and stuff, uh, once Noel was separated, apparently Carnage could still go into the void and into the hive and access people the way kind of Eddie is piloting people. Apparently Carnage can too. And what's upsetting about that is, is Eddie going to get involved in this story? Because Carnage is the loose thread that Eddie Brock did not wrap up. Um, you know, after taking down Noel, before that he fought, you know, there was uh, absolute carnage, and then he fought carnage on the island, on Venom Island, and then carnage got away. So this is the result of Eddie not following through and finishing the job. Like, he finished the job with Noel and killed Noel, but he didn't finish the job with carnage. So this feels like a thread Eddie should be handling, and one that he could probably easily handle with his new powers. So this is frustrating. Like, so reading this setup already is frustrating. So I'm already confused. They're, they're going to start doing things in the story to be convenient for the story while also ignoring the Eddie Brock stuff. And I know Eddie said in issue four, uh, 200, he was like, well, I'm a stay-at-home dad now and I'm only gonna, I'm only going to help out in extreme situations. But he's like helping out aliens and other, you know, galaxies and stuff like that. So I don't understand why right here on Earth, him or Dylan can't get involved in it. And maybe they will get involved in this. I don't know. But at least for now, it just feels, I don't know, it, it feels a little sloppy. And so I wasn't liking that. So Scream gets taken over by Carnage and she starts killing the guardsmen. She's like, no, don't kill him. And I'm like, but didn't you just crush the head of one? Or or is that the same one and he was still alive? Like they don't make that clear. Because I was like earlier, didn't you crack his neck or kill him or stab him? And now you're stabbing him here and you're like, no, don't do that. There's a man inside. And I'm like, I, I don't get it. So they, that felt a little sloppy too. Maybe one of you can clear that up for me. But I, the book didn't make it clear. At least I read it three times and I still was like, is that the same guard, guardsman? Like what's going on? Um, but in the end, because the suit is separated from Andy and Andy can't get through to the suit, she's like, come back, join me. You know, let's let's work together. You know, like we got to stop Demogoblin and, and we got to fight Carnage and stuff. The suit won't, you know, won't give in. It's 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 now completely controlled by Carnage. So it forces Andy to tap into her Hellmark and use the Hellmark to um, ignite herself and the symbiote. And she basically says, you know, the reason the, the Hellmark fire didn't burn you before was because me, Andy, I was protecting you, the symbiote. But now if you're going to do this and you're going to be given into Carnage, I can't let you roam free, you know, and I can't let you make me kill other people. So I have to activate the Hellmark, and she does, and she, you know, lights everybody up. She fights off some of the guardsmen, and then in the end, um, it seems like she kills, completely kills, and destroys Scream. Um, so we'll see, obviously, where that goes, if the Scream symbiote is actually gone for good. Um, I, I, I would highly doubt that. But at the same time, you could still tell Andy and Hellmark stories, and having her still go after Demogoblin with the Hellmark, you can still have that story moving forward and do like an Andy Benton Hellmark miniseries with Demogoblin um, if they ever wanted to wrap that up. So you can still kind of do that. But I feel like a lot of people do like her as Scream. And I do like the other voices of the other women that have been in there, um, you know, existing. I thought that added an element to the book and the character that wasn't there before that I did like. So I hope this is not the end of Scream and uh, and, and hopefully it won't be. But, uh, but I will say for a this felt weird to me. Like the first issue ended with, you know, Crane, the senator guy, like, you know, uh, it seems like he's Carnage now, like he's possessed by Carnage. And now Carnage can go out and mess with these other Life Foundation symbiotes. And he's telling them like, you weren't born like naturally, you were created in a lab. And uh, that for some reason gives Carnage even more access to them, I guess. But he's like, I can turn you into like real symbiotes or I can awaken your true potentials you know just give in to me or whatever and so that seems like what's happening um and I'm kind of just like I don't know I I will see where it goes I think the next book of this is called Phage so it's going to focus on probably a new host for Phage and and what that entails uh, so we'll have to see with that issue but I, I I don't know I guess I kind of figured that with each of these one shots it would be focused on these characters like that's what you want if you're doing an alpha and omega those are the that's the main story 
Uh, and then obviously these one shots are going to focus on each individual life foundation symbiote. So I'm okay with that overall, but I guess I was hoping for more connective tissues in this to the actual story. But obviously uh, the writer of this and the artist, they still have unfinished business with the Demogoblin story. So they wanted to touch on that. And then they were like, okay, we'll include Alchemex and the Guardsmen and try to tie it all together. So I think he did a good job overall in doing that. But I, I don't know, I feel, still felt like there was a slight disconnect from this book to what was set up in the first one, uh, because the first one like had Flash and it had that guy Hank at the end. And I'm sure that story will be continued in one of these books at some point, but I hope it happens sooner than later. Like if Hank becomes Phage and that story picks up the next issue, then this one won't feel like, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be like, okay, I'm more forgiving of this one. But if the next one focuses on completely new characters and a new phage and it goes in a, and it just has guardsmen in it as the only connective tissue, then once again, I'm going to feel like it's a lazy crossover where they have one writer write the main books, Omega and Alpha, and then they have all these other people. They just say, hey, put like they did with uh, King and Black. They're like, just put a dragon in it. And this one, maybe they're like, just put the guardsmen in it. And that, that's all you need to do. Uh, or have Carnage, you know, have a scene where Carnage takes over the symbiote. Like have those two things and that's it. That'll be the connective tissue. I hope that's not what we get with these one shots. I hope that there is more connective tissue to the overall story and we see Flash and Hank and uh, Crane and all those characters in more of these one shots. At least that's what I'm hoping. But for now, I mean, it was okay. It was an okay issue and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I was just, I was kind of mad about this one, which is a bummer because I like the team and I like the character and I like that they were trying to wrap up what they were doing before with Demogoblin or at least continue that so that they, that we know they haven't forgotten about that story. But I also, I don't know, I guess the, for a, a book that's supposed to tie into an event, it just felt like a slight misstep, at least to me. Um, but I, I still overall, I'd recommend picking it up yourself and uh, and seeing how you feel about it. And once again, I did get the trading card cover. So hopefully I will be able to get all these so I can make all nine and connect them. I'm not normally a variant guy, but I just, I like this idea of doing like an homage to Bakley uh, and his artwork from the 90s with the Spider-Man trading cards. I kind of like that. Um, and then at the beginning of this episode, I hopefully gave away the digital code uh, or at some point in the episode, I gave it away. So whoever got that code, let me know down below if you got it. And if you did, read the book, and let me know your review down in the comments below as well. And everyone else, if you've read the book, if you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever you like, dislike, put that in the comments down below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll have more Carnage Week coming to you very soon. We got Carnage Volume 2 coming up from the Carnage series. We just did Volume 1 in the previous episode. We got Episode 650 coming up where we're going to do a live chat and talk about all things that are going on with the symbiotes right now. Um, maybe talk about some movie stuff if there's any news that pops up. And we'll do a digital comic giveaway. So every Marvel book I've been buying for the past few months, I'll try to write down all those codes and we'll have a fun giveaway on Episode 650. So make sure you stay subscribed so you don't miss out on that. And then we'll conclude our Carnage Week stuff as we cover more of the Extreme Carnage books. We'll also cover the Carnage miniseries that came out recently called, uh, what was it, Black, Red, and Blood or something like that, or Black, White, and Blood, I think it was called. So we'll cover that series at some point coming up. Uh, we have the Ravencroft miniseries. we got to finish the Jerry Conway Volume 2 and 3. So we'll do those coming up uh, first and foremost. And then we'll have Red Goblin um, kind of uh, be the cap of our Venom or our Carnage Week. That'll be the last episode of the official Carnage Week. Um, but the Summer of Carnage will still continue uh, for sure, all the way up till September when the movie comes out because we're just around two months away, like two and a half months away from the movie hitting theaters. And I'm very excited. So uh, let me know again what you think down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.